Hey you, do you want to take a sneak peek into Night Punk's Ableton project file? I do. Stay tuned for this video and you get to see all of Night Punk's secret production tips. We have a very special free download for you in the description, so go check that out. This sample pack is inspired by Night Punk with tons of hard hitting drums. You guys are going to love it. Also, from now to the end of August, we are running a Mid Temps Volume 1 and 2 sale, so go on our website to get all of our summer specials. What's up, everybody? My name is Parker Ament. My name's Danny Ferrari. And we are Excellent Sound. Today, we have the incredible, Woo! the one and only, Woo! Lasha, Woo! or Night Punk. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming, man. Thank really awesome. Man. Really awesome to have you in here, man. We actually all met at EDC. Yep, that's right. <laughs> which was so cool, man. We did like this like little video of people asked us like, who do we think is the most up and coming artist? And you were the one. Everybody was talking about you at EDC, bro. Yeah, that, everybody like, we were was. New, like, you know, like, oh, we gotta go see Night Punk, you know? I think um, in other upcoming people, I so in yeah. Knock Two. Yeah, they're Knock crazy crew. too. Yeah, they definitely need it. Deserve a spotlight. As Absolutely. Well. Yeah. yeah, when we saw you at Corona stage, it yeah. was it was one of the craziest sets like I've personally ever seen. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to be impressed these days, you know? And I was yeah. definitely impressed by your set, man. The break beats, the bass, like how you were chopping in and out, like Thanks. it was it was wild. That was actually super extreme for me because that set was not planned. It was just like so sick. <laughs> I was I wanted to just like challenge myself and as much as it was like stressful in the moment i was just like going through folders from different sets i remember i did like i had like a cool mix here in the set cool mix combo in this set i was just like running through both it was, that makes it, was, it even sicker dude like that was extreme i can't i like finished set and i was like i look at my friends <gasps> I, like, what just happened? <laughs> you I blacked insane. out in the booth yeah, yeah. It, was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy i was like yeah, bro. Are you going to try to do more sets like that? Like, where you like, um, don't plan it because of that experience? or You know, depends. Depends. Uh, I feel like Corona was more like um, like us. Right. More like intimate and crew, and we're just going to have fun. I think when it comes to, like, specific, like, a big concert mm -hmm. style, I would definitely want to be prepared and, right. and kind of curate the night punk mix yeah set you know there's definitely things that i do on the fly when it comes to like adding some effects or like maybe skipping a track and right. figuring things out on the spot yeah the corona was extreme yeah <laughs> was that was like, fun we're first. stoked to learn from you and and kind of get some uh info as far as like your process and everything bro so we got like a, a this is a, a remix of a effing track yeah this is a remix of an effing track i I had a lot of fun working it. As much as I try to kind of respect the original, I have a moment in the song where it completely switches. Yeah. Entire direction. Vocals really pretty much like inspired me to make little like a night vibey right. track, kind of different from some other powerful sound and like the environment I bring in, in my music. But uh, I don't want to mention the songs that I'm putting out next are gonna be like still very night punk, but I really want to express the musicality that. I've been always like kind of hiding in my projects. Oh, nice. That's awesome. I do have like a lot of songs out that still expresses that, but with like a, some new I'm working EP. Dope. Um, Hell yeah. So that EP is going to like pretty much like show how far I can go. Mm -hmm. at, at least like at this stage musically, I want to really express it. Would you right. say some versatility in there? Yeah, there's going to be, I think there's going to be like four or five tracks and all very different from each other, but still kind of operating in the same world, but very different. Nice. That's awesome. Can you tell the people when you're planning to put it out? Yeah, do you have a specific date uh, or a timeline? I'm thinking like October. October? October. Nice. Yeah, so still, still working on those tracks. It's going to take some time, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how it's yeah. received. Um, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm super excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Have you found a label for it yet, specifically? It's going to be Hard Records. Okay, nice. Very cool. Yeah, it's going to be hard. You know, we want to do a special things about the cp i'm doing a lot of emphasis on uh, songwriting right and um obviously i'm always heavy in production but songwriting i wanted to like stand out and kind of touch like all kinds of demographic like right do you have any cool shows coming up that you want to tell the yeah. people about i am 
playing Deaf Global. Sick. Oh, Sick. snaps, dude. Yeah, um, I'm playing two of, of those shows, actually. I've been wanting to be part of it for so long, and it's uh, finally happening. I'm super stoked. And um, one is happening on... 12th of August, so everybody should come. It's in Atlanta, right? Yep. Yeah, it's one of the shows that you want to miss out. No. Whatever happens, don't don't miss out. You showed us a video of like what goes on at Def. It's one of the. Do they call it Defcon? The world. Defcon. Defcon 1000. Was that a dad joke? <laughs> I was trying. I was trying, Danny. Thanks, dude. Just no, throw you, me no, under the it. bus. No, you did it. Yeah, this one's 12th of August, and the next one is New York, September 16th. Dope. Yeah. That's amazing. That'll be so, fun. Uh, yeah. And then what's your next, do you have like a, uh, what's your next song that you're putting out? I'm putting out, it's called, it's called Black and Colors. Okay. So. And it's going to be a single on hard. It's not going to be off the EP, it's just going to be a single. But I'm super stoked for that. That's also one of the really like new sound that I kind of went for in this song. Mm-hmm. My friend Isa, she's from. I got to know her in New York, and we made a song. Incredible um, songwriter, vocalist, and um, I finally, it finally came to life. I had the the ideas in the song playing for a while, and we finally kind of wrapped it up. And I went really hard in production as well. So I Great. hope everybody likes it. Yeah, man, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I can play for you guys later. If yeah. You do you yeah. have any pre-save for it or anything like that on not Spotify? Yet, okay. Yet, well, when yet. you do, like, hit us up. We can, like, post the, you know, obviously share the love and maybe Thank get you. our people on board to pre-save it because, you know, Thank that's you. huge. Yeah. Let's go over some basses, bro. I'm yeah, let's do it. Basses. I want to talk about drums. Alrighty. Let's jump in. Okay, so. What were you saying about the key? You'd like, oh, did yeah. You sh- is it shift in the song? Is that what you did? Or? Yeah, so pretty much, like, the song's about drugs. So, and in here... It must be the drums that's fucking with my heart. It must be the drums. So pretty much like in this part. That's fucking with my heart. So I like the weird stuff. And then I have like a pills. Oh, nice. Sick. Like, like, yeah. You know, like eating so many pills at the same time. And then once that happens, pretty much like I stretch. <laughs> And then in here, I already like set the key for what's coming. So it kind of ah. sets the key already. So this is the only opportunity pretty much I have to like pitch down the song. Wow. That's really cool. These are my drums here. That's so creative. Yeah, you don't even notice it. Yeah. Pretty much like uh, this is a snare. I have a really light snare. Ooh. Beautiful. Uh, but what I'm doing here, I think this is, yeah, what I'm doing here is pretty much like. I have a pre-delay mm-hmm. that ah. does like a 16 note. Right. Dope. You're doing like a tiny reverb throw with the decay, right? Yeah. Tiny. But then the d- decay becomes longer. Ah. Oh, that's really unique. So it kind of like... I love how you were pulling out the. This is just like claps, kind of uh, running left and right. Right. It's really cool with the decay, bringing, telling yeah, everybody really to creative. go away, and then you bring them yeah, back yeah, in yeah, on exactly. the net on the yeah, one. Yeah. Ooh, so just like hi hats. <laughs> It's like the hi hats are just like kind of, it's like a response, like kind of closing the sentence. So I wanted to 
so I wanted to like bring this stuff but like with like a 909 high and this is like a small pause like the whole uh, groove. So, yeah, this is pretty Jesus. much like drums. Uh, oh yeah, um, I have this um, thing here. This is from like a '90s um, actual sampling CD. Oh, cool! Um, really cool. So, yeah, it's like a house. Did sample. you sample that yourself, or did you find that? I, I I found it. Uh, I found the ISO file. Uh huh. So, and then I like exported the sounds pretty much. Dope. Really cool. That sounds so nice. Such a nice player. So this is what, about, what I was thinking like about the group pretty much. Um, it's like still has the, the same groove, you know, right. it, doesn't, it, it doesn't break the, like the, the head bump. Pretty much. Uh, and that's what you're, you're kind of using the snares for in that sense to kind of keep you yeah I can still have a groove but like if it was like, <laughs> like, it's like right yeah um, it's still in the groove but it's just like deep end. so <laughs> it's like that's what I meant like locking in the groove right it's like surprise <laughs> That's drums. Oh, um, really cool, man. Thank you. I love my favorite thing was was seeing the that you boosted the actual note of the snare like insanely because sometimes I do that and I feel like I'm doing something wrong, you know, like yeah. I'm not supposed to <laughs> yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. But then, like, you see somebody else do it, they're like, Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sick. Love. Check. Must be the Wow. So this is like a, also an old sample. Ah, okay, really yeah. Really cool. Old, but I'm doing like instead of dropping on one, I'm doing like sixteen note off. Right. So it goes. So I'm, I have a little amp, a little bit of a redox, OTT, some kind of e EQ, multiband, limiter. Multiband and sidechain. Yeah, I noticed that you're limiting quite a bit of your your tracks. Is that kind of like what you were talking about? Like, kind yeah. of essentially trying to get the mastering in the mix. Yeah, yeah. And Sounds is... good. That's sick. Yeah, yeah, that's I a love sick this sound. sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is like. A... <laughs> How, it's just so funny when you hear like the original sound and you're like, how the fuck did you get from that <laughs> to, this is to that? It's like, this, oh, so dope. Really uh, cool. Yeah, I'm boosting this. Yeah. Song. Yeah, that makes a, huge, makes a huge difference. It was a little soothed to just like take the weird peaks out. But yeah, pretty much like it's it's easy, you know? Like Yeah. Together, it's like Stab. 
Ah, that's really that's cool. Really cool. Like I'm like reversing some stuff and like creating some fades. There's some kind of small processing, nothing crazy, but it's just like the sentence. <laughs> and then like pretty much like the it goes well with the. I try to like rearrange like vocals and stuff as if it's like an instrument. Right. Check. <laughs> The vocals you choose in your productions oh are insane. Like the little bits. A lot of the the reverb sounds like it's actually coming from the samples itself. Or did yeah. you you don't really have reverb on them, so you're using no, like no. the reverb in the sample, which yeah, I thought yeah. was really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the the vocal samples that you use, dude, yeah. are are insane. Thank like you. I was trying to figure out which ones I was just listening to like your discography on Spotify. And I love that Kendrick one. The Kendrick that I think that was MTV, right? Oh, it's not. It's not Kendrick, but it sounds like. Sounds it. like Kendrick. That was actually Joe's friend. Oh no oh, way! Nice. It sounds just like Kendrick, yeah. dude. And then all of your little fill vocals are yeah, really, you. really cool, man. You, you could tell a good producer like by their fills sometimes. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I agree. Right? Like when you hear like a really I'm not talking dope about fill. myself, but yeah. I agree. When the fill is done right, I'm like. Oof, that person's knows. good yeah he knows what he's talking about we talk about that with uh he's friends with Gasly, and like and you know Gasly. whenever i listen to his stuff like the stuff that stands out to me obviously his his stuff is great but it's always his fills i'm like Fuck, he has how great does he fucking great do that fills. you know yeah yeah there's a music a lot of musicality in the fills but pretty much so yeah it's like yeah it's like a resampled bass this is I made this bass actually in 2012. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. So. So pretty much like it's like a building a sentence. Right. I love how you explain that. Yeah, I like that a lot too. That's it. Right. You know what I mean? Ah, okay. You know, like, kind of layering. I love how much stretching and manipulating of the audio that you're doing. This is from... <laughs> Where is it? Hello? <laughs> yeah! Uh -huh. poppin'. Poppin'. Okay. Yeah. 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 I gotta ask him. Cause if I don't, it's poppin'. I don't know. It's poppin'. Let's go. What you know about me? What you what you know about me? Epic. Actually, this one inspired. That's a hit kit. Yeah, that's there the one. it is. Oh, HK. Okay. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Motorcycle. Yeah, a lot of automation in the pitch. That's dope. Oh. 
I love that. Oh, that hard? I'll say that one more time. He gave me like a weird, um, like a stabs, like a reverb out, like. Cool. You mentioned that you use like yeah, analog and operator, obviously. Like, do you like the sound of their their like basic shapes more so than like using a serum? Or is it just easier because it's an Ableton one and it's like doesn't take it, a lot of yeah. processing? Yeah, yeah, uh, both. But I mean, I like um, it's like it's like soul wave, um, sine wave, square wave. They're like really, I don't know. Also, like I feel like they're just like a, just a classic waveform. Yeah, you know that, and also like you can go so far from there. Just right. Like just starting something, you know. But yeah, what else? <laughs> Pretty much like in here, I'm shifting the frequency. Ah. So it gives me like a response, pretty much. Just one guy, right? You know. And uh, also, what I'm doing here, I think I'm like panning left and right as well. No? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much I want. just use that as like a vocal. I thought that was like a funny thing to do. I, I noticed too, I think one of my favorite things about this track is the melody that you use in the drop. It feels like so, but dun, 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 dun. like it's so like non conventional, but like very, very much easy to listen to. Yeah. And I'm just like, whenever I hear something that I like, I like and enjoy like that. I'm always like, oh, like, how does somebody get to that point? Because I know pe we, people ask us that too. Like, oh, how do you get to that point? I don't know why. I just really appreciate the the drop melody, especially in this song. I think, I and think, obviously the fills yeah, and stuff. Thank but. you. I think the simplicity came from when I make a track, I always imagine like a scene. Right. You know, I imagine on in this track, I imagine like a, like a rooftop party. Mm -hmm. they just have they have like a let's say like a light blue lights mm -hmm. you know everyone's like 
looking good, having cocktails, whatever. And like, and like, how much do you care about that moment? You know, like, right. you just want to have fun. And I think, I think I wanted to just go with like a laid back mm -hmm. kind of vibe. And the melody was also like, also like, just like a childlike easy. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be like, right and but that's like a strong melody you mm -hmm. know that's so human like i mean it's like coming straight from the feeling right you know so that was like one of the melodies i always like hum melodies mm -hmm. when i write there are some tracks where i really have to like brainstorm something right beautiful and harmonies and what melody works here and the crazy chords and you know but sometimes this is this is just like the very mono feeling a right. monophonic feeling you know this is it like like that's it well you had mentioned earlier too with us the way that you do your music is like thing every instrument is dancing with each other and yeah. that rhythm especially but dun, exactly dun, dun, like it's yeah, yeah, very yeah. very rhythmic and makes you sort of you can imagine that essentially being a dance move like you had kind of mentioned exactly, before right. and i and i totally get that now that you've like yeah. explained that this and showed us dance move. yeah it's very yeah. very cool like you can do the same doesn't matter where you put your arm but right. the sequencing can be a dance move right it's so cool man it's very very cool to have that sort of creative visualization of creating music you know to think about that so i think that's probably one of my like biggest takeaways from today was the way that you visualize that and how your body would essentially move, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It makes so much sense. I don't think enough producers think about the big picture in that way, like yeah. beyond what happens after the song, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you're creating a landscape of sound, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's a, like, that's how I approach every element in the song, you know? Like, like it could be a, a whole chore choreography, pretty much. Right. Even if the music is not there, you just translate every sound into move like they could be a whole dance show yeah and that's you know? that's authentically who you are because like you said as you grew up you know like learning how to dance or whatever and doing that that has now come out in your music which is now a part yeah. of what the night punk sound is which is yeah. really really cool really crazy yeah if you think about it we talk yeah. about that all the time about like people ask us like how to develop their own sound and be like yeah take aspects of every part of your life exactly as far yeah. as like what you enjoy like it yeah. could be like oh i really enjoyed like pokemon you know i mean it could be something simple like that and then that will influence your sound like anything exactly you know? absolutely very cool man i i was looking at i think it was it might have been the vocals or one of the basses okay. you have two you have two side chains on um are you right. side chaining the kick as well as the snare yeah yeah i was gonna ask about the side chain too if you were doing like uh tr like what kind of trigger you're using i see uh, that your side chains very are, very sharp yeah, these are um right now i would not do this way anymore oh really yeah so pretty much like i'm like cutting all the lows from kick and snare right so i can um or actually from snare i'm taking all the highs so i only have the pop right now i use pro c by oh pro really c. Yeah. interesting yeah i moved on that uh, they have a really good look ahead when it comes to i don't know i switch between because when it comes to like really short really short side chain they don't go below 10 milliseconds right sometimes i wish they did but they have like a bunch of effects and like i kind of like a I can like audibly hear avoiding of the c clicks. So it depends. Sometimes like I like distort with sidechain. Like for example, mm -hmm. like this. Like I I have like a zero release, and the, and I just like drag the sound mm -hmm. because they all the every sound has like a spikes and stuff. Right. Like a, you know, like a amplitude, like that pretty much like shapes the other sound. Mm -hmm. like I like drag the threshold down and I distort the some of the sounds like that so I, I use a lot of c normal compressor side chain mm -hmm. but when it comes to like drums i used to do a shaper box right um, like volume shaping but um, i don't know right now i like the sound of uh pro c yeah pro c nice i want to try that i i hated how 11 changed their compressor stocks because like when you used to side chain and it would all be set up but now you have to push all these extra buttons to get yeah. it to side chain how it used to yeah that's yeah. annoying i never use the eq setting yeah pretty much like what it does is like if I want a side chain and a kick, if I have a full on normal kick, it's gonna have a long tail, so audio right. file is gonna be longer. Mm -hmm. But if you like cut the whole sub, pretty much you're gonna be left with like a small click. Right, and that's so what then, you're looking for. Yeah, and exactly. 
So you are side chaining from your kick, or do you have like a ghost channel? Both. Both. Okay. Both. Whatever works in the moment. If if my kick has like a lot of texture, it's not gonna be a click. Right. Pretty much. So. I feel like it's it blends in a little bit more when you use the EQ. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just like a transient. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I've been having this thing with side chain lately, where the way that we usually side chain is we usually use like serum and we and we draw it, like kind of like a volume shaper or a shaper box. We draw in the LFO and I'll draw the shape as far as what I, exactly the shape that I want it to be. Oh, okay. But what I've noticed is sometimes the curve, because I usually do like an S curve type of thing. Sometimes like when you're really, really like kind of tweaking on a side chain, you know what I mean? And you want that like if it's like a kick on it on like an 808 or a bass and you really want that sub to flow in perfectly. And I feel like sometimes I can I can't just get like the perfect crossfade with like the release and the attack. And it's like yeah, this yeah. little game of like trying to be perfect. And it drives me fucking nuts sometimes. Yeah, we were doing that on a track the other day and I was like fuck man like but that's yeah. cool i mean i i always love hearing how other people sidechain and do things because it yeah. gives us new shit to try you know yeah it's like a super old way of sidechaining yeah right before this i did shaper box then right before that i did a click sidechain mm -hmm. right before that right before that i did this yeah it's like i it's like right now i tried everything and i'm like oh that worked in that case right and this works in this case, and that works in this. So it's like always different. Yeah. But like, yeah, lately I've been doing a lot of uh, pro C. Nice. Yeah, we we definitely have to try pro C. Yeah. You've yeah. inspired us. I like so, the thing I like about the Ableton compressor. Shout is... out to Long Story Short. He told me. Oh yeah, nice. that's the one who gave it to you. No. Yeah. The thing I like about the Ableton compressor in this mode is the visualization of being able to see yeah, it yeah, like yeah. that. Pro C has huge. that too. It does? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Do that. That's great. That's kind of one of the main reasons I think I use the Ableton is that specific visualization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. It helps a lot. On my master, I have pretty much I'm doing like a little bit of EQ shaping, one some dynamic EQs. Hmm. Um, Interesting. So I'm like doing a, mo a mid. Right punching and i'm doing like the sides on the high but i'm bringing down super highs in here and i'm just pushing a little bit but this is like my headphones that's the headphone shit. reason yeah. yeah um pro l and multiband pretty much just like controlling some areas the lows and highs yeah nice so you're a you're a huge advocate of mixing before it hits the master yeah absolutely yeah I, i'm like shaping the original chords from his song, Evan's song. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get this like a. Oh, you're pitching him. Yeah, yeah, pitching. Oh, cool. Chord. Pretty much like a rewrote the uh, chord. That's really cool. Yeah, this part I think it, like I was inspired by like Timberland and like Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Like, happens every night. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Those are the. Yeah. I'm like doing a grand delay, which pitches up like 12, so it kind of gives like a sparkling yeah. effect. It goes up. Oh, it adds like a violin to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's also, cool. Like, little it's really like, interesting. Like a, little, like a sparkling effect. And this is the same thing here, I think. This is also an old sample. <laughs> But uh, in here, I don't have contact, but I'm going to, it's like kind of opening up. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, but it was like strings. Cool. Something in your eyes got me paralyzed. No, no, it's okay. It must be the drugs, painting my blood. Cause I feel your touch, where will I see you start? My mind's on the run. It's like how I stretch it in here. Oh, oh, I oh okay. Pretty much like I'm leaving this little spot here that's already set on the key. Right. Because so it doesn't kind of create too much confusion. Mm -hmm. It's not like oh this key you know i like set the tone and then i go in right you know what i mean did you have that idea in mind when you first heard the song or did you have some sort of drop ideas in that first key and it just wasn't working or what um, was your what was your mindset with that 
Yeah, I mean, I had those. I, I had the idea already down, but I realized it was just like a just really high key. Yeah. You know, and I had to either drop it in a different key that would, that was feeling that that felt a little weird. It always felt like you would go back to actual key. You know, yeah. it's like you're like always here because you want to hear the actual song key. So, uh, I, so I thought the the pitching down would kind of create like okay like this is a song it's a really cool solution Thank to you. to a key problem yeah yeah I sometimes also, like, the vocal helped a lot because it's like it must be the drugs and then like you're not you know this guy's tripping yeah really hard <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's definitely, definitely tripping fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> that's dope, yeah so. that's really cool man I think I mean do you want to you want to show anything else do you do you feel like there's any uh like um, cool little things that you want to show in here this is all really, really cool, man. Interesting. Yeah, yeah that's so dope. I sampled this from like a dance CD. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so. Really cool. Yeah. I really, I really appreciated how almost every single sample had some type of thing that was going on, whether it be some type of like interesting automation or it could be like a delay throw or something with the auto pan. The thought put into every single sound that really, really kind of creates the vibe of the track. So I really appreciated the amount of detail that you went into some of these sounds that you might not be able to notice within hearing an entire mix, but if you took them away, you would. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, definitely. So I really yeah, appreciated yeah. that 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 element in... That always makes me feel like, ah, oh, stop being so lazy, dude. <laughs> you know, like, cause even... Create some interest. Yeah. yeah. When you when you hear something, you know, I, I, when I, like when I hear something, I can't just like look away. Right. You know, so it's like when I'm in the flow and I, I'm just like hearing, hearing, hearing all these ideas and try to like put them down as fast as I can. Yeah. It's like getting in the flow and just like coming up with all the ideas and then cleaning things up. Right. Very cool. That's awesome, man. Well, dude, thank you so much for showing us this. Yeah, this is thank like you, Lasha. this is a huge insight for all of the people at home, everybody that watches our videos and yeah. listens to you. Especially, we got an inside look into one of your project files. Like, that's huge, that's amazing. Man. Thank you for sharing. Yes, that, thank really. you so much. If you guys want to see more of Nightpunk, drop it in the comments. We're gonna drop all of his links down there. If you haven't heard of Nightpunk. I don't I don't know what you're doing. Honestly, go on Spotify. Get your shit together. Stream that shit immediately. Yeah. Really, really cool stuff. And that's it. Do you is there anything else you want to tell the people? Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, brother. This was fun. Hang out an entire day. Yeah. Really fun experience. Thanks for letting me show. I don't really do this. It was really cool to like break down. And um if you are in Atlanta, come to August twelfth show. Yep. Daft Global. One of the coolest things on earth. Definitely don't miss the show. And uh, just follow me everywhere at Night Punk. Yep. Hell yeah. All his links will be in the description down below. Yep. Subscribe, like the video, all that great shit. Yeah. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace. Peace. Must be the